mysterious story. There seem to be 13 videos that many people would be too terrible to watch, let alone experience in person. I can only wish you the best of luck. Number 13. Kevin Diepenbrock has ended up at the bottom of a ditch. Even though he is unable to stand, he can still keep a camera and record, so he creates a goodbye video for his friends. Oh, and even though he attempted to call for assistance, he couldn't receive any signal. The sun sets, and most of us would have become unconscious for a short time or panicked by now, but Kevin is still calm and focused enough to devise a reasonable plan. Seven o'clock. Got to use my flashlight to wave somebody down. Although you can hear traffic pass him just 50 feet away the entire time, there is not anyone having any cause to look at the bottom of a massive ditch, so they continue to go. Uh, yeah, I can use a drink of water. Uh. I'm greatly surprised that he's not crying or anything when he says goodbye calmly, completely at ease with the situation. All right. Love you. Love you, Courtney. A random person discovered Kevin 30 hours later, long after the video had drawn to a close and his phone had lost its charge. He seems to be alive and well. He is still alive and okay. Number 12. Zanio hardly has time to turn on his live stream and say hello before something strange happens at the back of him. Without making a sound, the window changes from tightly shut to wide open in less than 10 seconds. Unless I'm mistaken, this kind of window does not open from the outside, so someone must be standing in the room to even push it open. In less than a minute, Zanio immediately looks for his house and discovers that no one else is present. When he enters the living room, however, the batteries in his smoke alarm turn off for no apparent reason. This is the first time you hear the smoke alarm beep in the entire video, so I know it's real. Okay. Oh, okay. Smoke alarm malfunction. The smoke alarm going off, integrated with the window opening on its own, persuades me that this is most likely paranormal. Number 11. This appears to be Arizona police dashcam footage. The officer is obviously on nighttime highway patrol, and after a short while, he turns down a dirt road. This is where he notices a woman who is standing alone in the middle of the road, with some small embers near her feet. Despite the fact that she appears to be standing with her back to the police cruiser. Soon after she raises her arms, two glowing eyes appear to be staring at the officer. The footage abruptly draws to a close with no further explanation. Even though I looked for it, I couldn't discover any video of the incident after this point. As a result, we may never have an idea what happened next to this office or this woman with glowing eyes. Number 10. While a man records the train tracks, an alone stranger staggers out of the trees. As they walk forward at a slow pace, the person appears off balance and out of sorts, barely avoiding a forthcoming train. Just as it appears that the worst is over, another train speeds up. Although it's on the horn, he can't listen to it. He only takes a step when he notices the cameraman motioning for him to do so. If not, he would have continued to walk directly in front of it. Although he is in debt to this cameraman his life, appreciating his shortage of reaction, he doesn't seem to care. Number 9. A beverage truck spins out of control around a corner, launching litre bottles of soda everywhere, as captured by this street camera. Based on his backpack, a student must sprint in the opposite direction, narrowly avoiding a carbonated tidal wave. Moreover, there's a rush of heavy red crates moving at breakneck speed. Eventually, even though it appears that these could have been steel cans, I'm not certain. If that were the case, each of them would have been hit with the power of a baseball bat, and I can't believe he kept away from them all. Number 8. Kaylin McIntyre is filming a video of her grandfather to remember him for the rest of her life, which may be much shorter than she thinks. On such a beautiful day, even though it may appear that nothing bad could happen to them, to their immediate right is a sharp drop straight off a cliff. 
they strike a point in which the curved road becomes extremely narrow, just as the sun beats down on their car at the worst possible angle, changing from the whole windshield to a blinding white glare. Although Grandpa tries his hardest to stay on the road, it is a such bright sun that even his oversized sunglasses can't keep the glare out of his eyes. Even though they discover a brief respite under the trees, the road is not large enough to safely turn around. You can say that he doesn't want to continue, but it's too late and there's no other option. He must return to the blinding sunlight and go on pushing forward just a little bit more until he is able to carry out this turn. Maybe there's something up ahead? Even though he only has a short distance to go before turning around, he almost drives off the cliff instead. Starting to get a little or <laughs> I can't even see. Where am I? <gasps> oh, okay. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh. This is a brief glimpse of the cliffside to let you have a better idea of how close they were to fall off. As you can see, he was still going on the right and had to correct the steering wheel significantly to keep away from tumbling below. Kaylin eventually keeps away from the car and leads her grandfather to safety. As you can see, the sun is still completely in his eyes, and it's a small miracle that they made it out alive. Number 7. Emily Saurer, on vacation in South Africa, takes the risk of diving into a shark tank with some of her friends. She is pumped up on adrenaline and can't help but grip the cage bars anxiously out of stress. Soon after, a massive shark comes prowling along the cage, eager to get a better look at the potential meal inside. The tour guides use a piece of bait on a pole to cause to lose the shark's concentration, but it lunges at the last second and chomps where Emily's hands were. All the other girls can do is stand there and watch as the shark almost devours their friend's hands. I'm amazed there isn't a second outer cage to prevent this. Even though Emily escaped with her life, it's only a matter of time before someone pulls back a stump. Number 6. Something has crept this lamentable woman's leg and won't leave. Even though her friend nearly has it by the tail, then it does the unthinkable and burrows even deeper. The terrified animal would have climbed much higher unless she had stood up in time and allowed gravity to pull it back down. As her friend tries again, this time wrapping its tail around his index finger, she is either attempting not to scream or losing her lunch. He is able to extract a massive rat and quickly place it back in its container. This rat appears to be used to being handled, which is probably the only thing preventing it from biting and scratching its way out. Number 5. Because this couple started to feel watched shortly after moving into their new apartment, they set a camera in the bedroom. A few nights later, they capture footage of a fully grown adult standing outside their window. He doesn't appear to notice or care about how noticeable he stands out against the well-lit parking lot at first because he is so concentrated on staring into their bedroom. When the couple inside approaches the window and climbs onto the bed, he attempts to be more attentive but fails miserably. It's clear that he's still there, Mettlesome staring at them. He's about as close to the window as he can get, and he's probably having an intention of watching them without being seen himself, unaware that he's being recorded. They can see him the whole time, and it is at this precise moment that the boyfriend leaves and comes face to face with the man, who quickly stands up and walks away without any aggression. It turns out to be their next door neighbor. It turns out to be their next door neighbor. Even though he arrived and apologized the following day, I have a feeling this is enforcement he can't control, and he'll return at it soon, if not with them, then with someone else. Number 4. This 8 second video indicates someone clinging to the outside of a Chicago subway. Two observations about this video. First, I believe I see the blue straps of a backpack, which would get this stunt to be even more difficult. Two, at the three second mark, you can see him agree. He appears to be quite enjoyable with riding outside, and I'm curious how many times he's done it before. Obviously, attempting this is never a good idea. Number 3. It seems that two friends are fishing when they notice another hunter firing not far away. The two don't give it much thought and let the man go on his hobby while they go on theirs. They continue casting into the water, and everything is okay for about a minute before the two sports come into collision. 
Holy! Stop! Hey! Hey! It hit my boat! If you look closely, you can tell he didn't pick his foot up for noticeable effect. It was that close. When you change the video's slow motion to frame by frame, you can see the round bounce off the deck right by his foot. If they had been moving downriver even slightly faster, it would have been an immediate hit and a trip to the hospital for sure. Number 2. When someone gives up on their job, they are required to give their employer two weeks notice. This contractor becomes enraged on the job site and delivers a two-second notice in the form of total carnage. He has little regard for the security of a co-worker who is attempting to reason with him as he repeatedly slams the weighty equipment into the same spot, bringing down chunks of ceiling each time. By good luck, he appears to be more concerned with destroying the property than with taking lives, though he is fortunate that he did not bring the entire place down on everyone. Number 1. Tim, John, and Ben have an intention of investigating a house in the woods that is reported to be the home of a clan of worshippers who perform various rituals. They hike around the woods for a while until an unsteady white house emerges from the shadows. Inside, even though notifications are spray-painted in large dark letters all over the walls, they ignore them and continue on. Tim, John, and Ben take turns breaking things and jumping out at each other, but when they discover a dungeon-like basement that leads straight down, the three become very serious and quiet. The stench in this dark area is unbearable, so they cover their noses and mouths with their shirts. Apart from them, the only thing down there is two dolls hanging by their necks. At least, that's what they believe. Immediately, all three of them are fleeing what appears to be a creature with a low, throaty growl. Okay, you gotta go. Should this noise be real, it almost certainly represents the end result of a horrible ritual that none of us are courageous enough to witness. Thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to subscribe because I upload a new video every day. Or if you're still not convinced, here are some of my other videos that I think you'd like. Enjoy.